My name is Mary Richards. Although I have used several other names over the last few years, as thou canst see, I teach young children, something I enjoy immensely. But beyond this, I have always thought that teaching children was the most important thing I could do for them. Besides giving them an education, I believe that it is the most effective way to help children deal with the racism that still remains here in the South. Even though the war between the states ended a good two years ago. In fact, judging from the threats against the school and the ones against me personally, I think that losing the recent war may actually have increased prejudice amongst the Southerners. Sometimes, when I was out walking, people would treat me as if I had no right. I was always grateful when Miss Eliza Van Lu, in whose house I lived, would be there to help me. She was always kind and treated me as an equal. This makes my teaching children more important to give them the ability to face the challenges of their world and the opportunities to rise above the difficulties of the time. When I think of how happy I am now doing this work, I look back about 20 years ago to the time when I lived in the home of Elizabeth Van Lu and her sister Eliza in Richmond, Virginia. I was born into their household as a slave in either 1839 or 1840. One day my mother was out hanging the laundry on the line and I was sitting playing with sticks and leaves and I found a book buried under them. I picked it up and looked through it and saw it was full of pictures and words. I kept it and treated this primer like my Bible. Whenever I had time, I would find a corner and sit and look through my primer and see if I could connect the words to the pictures. The Van Loo sisters discovered me doing this and I was afraid of what they would do. But they surprised me and said they would teach me how to read. Thou hast called for me, Miss Family? Yes, Mary. Wouldst thou please have a seat for a moment? I would like to speak to thee. Ma'am? Please, just have a seat for a moment and do not worry. Just sit so we can talk comfortably. Mary, we are very pleased by thy work and very impressed with thy intelligence and abilities such as learning to read and write. Now, please do not be afraid. I know that slaves are not supposed to be taught to read, but in this house thou wilt not be punished but praised. But man. As I told thee, we are very impressed by thee and would like to offer thee the opportunity to better thyself further. Mary, we are going to send thee north to a school in New Jersey and then we'll contact the American Colonization Society to help thee go to the colony of freed slaves in Liberia to be a missionary. I don't know how to thank them. Mm -hmm. I will do my best to make them proud. Mm -hmm. Just be the best thou canst, and that will be thanks enough for us. One day when I was working, the Van Loo sisters came and gave me a dress and hat that I could wear when I went north to school. I had never had anything so beautiful and greatly appreciated their kindness. It was a long trip, but the time passed quickly. 
When I arrived at the university, I could not believe how beautiful it was. I knew I would have to study very hard in order to prepare myself to go to Liberia. It was a pleasure to sit and read anything I wanted without being scared as I had been in Richmond. I arrived back from Liberia in March 1860 and the war broke out just over a year later. How can Virginia and, and Virginians tear apart the country that I love so much? And I cannot understand why almost everyone we know is going along with it. I agree with thee, but... But please, let's keep our opinions inside this house. It may be dangerous, but there must be something we could do and not get caught. I could visit the Confederate wounded in the hospital and then go visit the Union prisoners of war and it would appear as if I were simply worried about their welfare. Still be careful. Women of our class are considered beyond suspicion. <laughs> the men in charge believe that women of our class would never do any wrong. Don't take any unnecessary chances. Miss Elizabeth Van Lu operated the largest spy ring during the Civil War, sending and receiving information through a network of messengers who came to her back window. Good morning, Mary. Thou hopes that are doing well. Yes, I am doing well. Thou hast been back long enough to notice what has been going on in this household. Yes, ma'am, I have. Well, besides being pleased to see thee, I have something special for thee to do. Perhaps thou hast talked with others in the house and have some idea of what we are doing here. Thou understandest that thou must never talk outside the house about anything thou hearest or seest, and it is probably best never to discuss it with the others here. Yes, ma'am, I understand. And thou canst count on me to do whatever I can to help. Good. If I had known what I was going to get involved in, I might have thought twice about returning to Richmond. Mary, how art thou coming with learning the material we gave thee? Miss Liza, I was learning real good what I has to do for where I'm going to. <laughs> oh, Mary, thou hast been learning thy accent well. Thank you, Mrs. All right. I think thou art ready, Mary. Thou hast already learned all the spy techniques we use, including how to code messages. The war got more intense. secretly getting information to the North by messenger became important. Then one day, the sisters approached me with an assignment to gather vital information. Mary, I have watched thee doing thy work in the manner of the house servants, and they tell me thou art just like one of them. I want to tell thee what the job is we have for thee. We would like for you to become a servant slave in the household of Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederate States. Miss Van Lu, that is impossible. What happened to thy accent, Mary? You scared it out of me. How am I supposed to do that, ma'am? Oh, easier than thou thinkest, Mary. There is a union agent already in the Davis household, and he will be sure they know that thou hast been an outside slave there and will be replacing one of them who will be leaving. Why 
would you send me there? <laughs> and also, Mary, there has already been in the Davis household working a number of their large parties. And I know no one even looked at thee as a person and so would not recognize thee. What thinkest thou? I think I can do it. And I'm looking forward to leaving when thou art smart. Thank thee for thy confidence in me. Thank thee, Mary. I carried out my work for the Union by listening to as many conversations as possible and going through Mr. Davis's papers when he was out. One day, when Mr. Davis worked at his desk, two members of the Confederate government came to dinner and Charles and I served and were able to listen to their plans. What state are you from, sir? I'm from Florida, sir. You're from Florida, that's our problem. I don't think it's going on the East Coast. We're not eating rats quite yet, sir. Good. Thank you, Charles. Annabelle? Be there something else, Master Jefferson? No, thank thee. I'd like to propose a toast to my wife, Verena, for having arranged for this wonderful meal. To Verena. To Verena. And in celebration of our great victory at Cold Harbor, I'd like to toast our victorious troops and their leaders. Sure. The victory. One day, Mr. Davis returned earlier than expected. He noticed someone had been searching his papers and only then became suspicious of me. I decided then it was time to leave. Before fleeing in 1865, I wanted to carry out one more task for the Union and decided to assassinate President Davis. What you doing? I know I'm going to be caught. And I want to strike against the Confederacy before I go. Wait now. See. If you kill him, they'll just take it out on the rest of us. And you still really haven't heard the Confederacy. Thank thee. I do not want to imitate their cruelty. I'll wait. Let's wait until they go to sleep. Then we can go to Massa Jefferson's office and get the papers that indicate what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. That will hurt it. No, he's ordered me to bring others into his office. He's checking on everybody. I'll tell him you ran away. Fortunately, we were able to escape to the Van Loo house. I was so happy to be safely back with the Van Loo's, and Charles later joined me. The information we brought back turned out to be valuable. The Civil War ended in April 1865. I soon left the Van Loo household, and as a free person, I could do whatever I wanted. What I wanted more than anything else was to help young children learn how to handle their new life of freedom. I also worked in several states setting up new schools for freed slaves. I love what I am doing. Tears of 
Hey. 